So we're continuing to work our way through the cow and today we're going to use some of the top side roast to make jerky. I'm going to do two different flavours, a mild one and also a sweet and spicy. But I'm not the aficionado when it comes to jerky in this family, so hubby's going to be taking over this one. So what's the plan, man? Well, you trim all the fat off it and clean her up so there is no fat. So this will go to the dog, the fat, and then we'll slice it very thin going across the grain. Okay, I've removed the fat from the top side and it's a better flavour and a better texture to eat without the fat. So we've now got a pretty clean um, piece of meat and I'll be slicing across the grain to make it so it's not as chewy as well. And I'll be trying to get it not super thin but not thick that it takes a long time to dehydrate in or smoke in the smoker so I'm looking at I don't know probably five mil I suppose thickness um, and I'll try and slice all the way down until we've got it sliced up Roughly, that's a good slice for me. That's how we like our jerky. It's probably worth noting that we're doing this on the afternoon that we got back when we've actually picked up the half cow order. And that means that this is kind of fresh meat at a kind of a fridge temperature. And I know in the past you have kind of like frozen it a bit as well and that makes it a bit easier to cut, doesn't it? Yeah. And the meat slicer is the other thing that you sometimes use. I use the meat slicer quite often, but today I thought I would slice it because um, the meat slicer sometimes works really well with certain cuts of meat. Um, this one looked like it'd be a good one just to slice along, being a nice straight cut meat. two piles ready to go probably worth worth also mentioning that we ended up with probably i think it was just over a, a kilo and a half in each of the piles of these as well that we'll be using that marinade on today this one is a very much traditional straight standard um mix so that's the the basic flavor and then you can add to it all right starting off with one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and it's uh, my paw. <laughs> we probably should explain that you're normally pretty fluid in the kitchen and uh, you don't really do recipes do you? No. <laughs> um, we are looking for one cup of soy sauce. So... That's half a cup. And that's all we've got. So we'll be mixing what, two thirds of a cup of soy sauce. Four tablespoons of freshly cracked pepper. So Can we hold it? Yes, please. Dash, fridge sauce. 
that's the good stuff. That's the one we did with our homemade plums using the Sally Wise home panning recipe for doing your own Worcestershire sauce. So it's pretty cool to be able to use that in our own jerky at home as well. And we'll add some chilli powder. Getting a good mix around. meeting making sure that everything gets coated so what I do is I do it like this and then I start stacking it yeah considering jerky is about a hundred dollars um, a kilo in the shops. This is a great way of doing it. I'm not sure, sweetie, how much did the, you reckon this top side would have cost us? Um, definitely nowhere near that. It was twelve fifty a kilo is what we paid for the half a cow, and I reckon we've got what? Would we say it was probably about two and a half kilos here? Yep. So. And obviously, it'll. Um, reduced down in weight once it's actually dried out um, once we do the smoking but um, yeah it's definitely still going to be far better value doing it at home like this so from there the lid just goes on and then that's going to go into the fridge and sit there overnight to marinate and then we can get on to this second one. Now this one here has a far bigger lineup of ingredients as you can kind of see here now. We've got a bit of chili, there's going to be some onion powder and that's a bit of our onion powder that we made here at home. Garlic powder, pepper, brown sugar, soy sauce. Now we've got a tin of pineapples here but we're not using the pineapples themselves, we're actually just using the juice out of there. Bit of balsamic vinegar, teriyaki sauce, and again, we're going to be using some of our homemade Worcestershire sauce as well. So, Hubby's going to pop those together to make this sweet and spicy flavour. And even though this one is a little bit more complicated, I'm probably a little bit more excited about this one because I do prefer the sweet, spicy sort of flavour. Bit of chilli, bit of sugar, bit of sweetness from that pineapple. Can't go wrong. Hey, so we're going to do our Next, a lot of flavours, and the first off is to put the chilli in. So, just mind my fingers, straight in. And that was a tablespoon. So, roughly a tablespoon of chilli. My wife and I, we like our chilli hot, and they're homegrown chillies, which are quite hot. After that, we are putting in my wife's homemade onion powder which is one tablespoon of and we're doing garlic powder one tablespoon of yeah they'll do See, now your true cooking colours are coming out. <laughs> Two tablespoons of hot pepper. I think it's probably worth noting as well, when you're doing things like jerky, the reality is you can mix up the ingredients a bit just to make it suit your own taste. So if you didn't like chilli, you could leave chilli out. If you really like chilli, you could add a heap more. If you don't like pepper, back off. Or you can add more if you want something that's really peppery. That's a short half a cup. I like sweet. <laughs> Thank you, husband. And then we're going to put in 
two thirds a cup of soy sauce. So I did actually manage to find a bit more soy sauce in the, uh, the cupboard there, which is good because we needed some for this recipe too. We are putting the juice of from pineapple slices in. So I'm just cracking it and just pouring it straight in. So this will add the nice sweet flavour to it. I think it also tenderises the meat as well, doesn't it? When you've got pineapple juice on meat. I think so. Yeah, the acidity. One third a cup of balsamic vinegar. Yeah, I'll do. And teriyaki sauce will be next. That is a cup. Okay, it's a rough third. Pour that in. And last half a cup of homemade mixture sauce give it a stir really good as I said I'm a bit more excited about this one spicy sweet and pineapple yum taste test oh that's um you taste the soy but it's really sweet um can't taste any heat in it but I bet you that will come through when the chili soaks into it um, yeah, that's, that's really nice. Okay, make sure everything gets a good amount of soaking. Make sure that everything is getting a good coat of mixture on it and nothing's folded over. And let it sit for overnight. So we're going to pop the lid on these now and they both go into the fridge. They'll sit there overnight and then we'll catch up with you guys in the morning and we'll pop these in the smoker together. Good morning, it's the next day and hubby's outside at the moment getting the smoker ready and that means I'm in here getting this jerky out of the fridge. So let's have a bit of a look at how that is looking after being in there overnight. Oh, ooh, that smells really good. You can see that's been soaking all night in that beautiful marinade and that's going to help impart a really nice flavour. All right, let's go see what hubby's up to. All right, how are you going with the smoker? Hey. Yep, just getting it ready, turning the temperature up to get the temperature going. It's a master built electric smoker. We prefer this one because a lot of our smokes are long cook smokes and we don't have to worry about running in and out with the temperature. Um, maintaining temperature, this thing, it's pretty much set the temperature and then when I do see smoke, the vent at the top, when I do see smoke not coming out, I just chuck a few more chips in. Um, and that's for us convenient because like today our smokes, our <clears throat> it's roughly about eight hours to do the jerky. So we know the temperature is going to be set for the eight hours. So we've had this one for a lot of years now because you've got an awesome wife that got you a great Christmas present quite a few years ago, didn't you? Yes, sweetie. 
<laughs> but it served our purpose. We do some great smokes on it. We do, you know, even just normal sausages, put it in and you smoke them. They turn out to be fantastic. We've done uh, poppers, we've done steaks, we've done with pretty much a lot of chicken, uh, pork, you name it, we've done the whole lot. It's going to take a while to warm up, so we've got that going, and yeah, they're, they're great. So these electric ones are pretty simple to use. As you can see, just done the temperature on the top. There's a bunch of racks and stuff inside, which we'll show you when we kind of load that up in a second. These are the chips you're using today. Yep, they're the only ones we've got for their maple. Okay. <laughs> so no choices today, but you do often use different types of chips as well, don't you? Yeah, we use a lot, and they're easy to get to these days. Um, all the shops have them. The butchers, one of the butcher shops we go to has all the difference, so they're just basic good chips. That's essentially all it is. Yep. And when it's hot, that gets loaded in the side. Yep, all you need to do without even opening up your cooker, you just take that, open it, put the wood chips in. Chuck, chuck them in? Or? Yeah, you can chuck them in. And then you just put them like that. You turn and it drops them into a tray, which then causes them to cook, uh, to smoke. Now, that's this is a good system because you're not actually opening up the box and losing your heat. Um, so it's really easy to maintain. Yeah. Which is good because I need to uh, be feeding this one today. So Hubby's loading this up before he heads off to work. I've actually taken a day off work today. And that means that I am going to be on official jerky maintenance duty. So how often am I going to have to be putting the chips in? Well, for the first three hours, you just keep an eye. And when you see that there's no smoke coming out the top, that's the way I do it. When I see that there's no smoke coming out, I put more chips in. Um... You know, it's probably about once like every 45 minutes. Yep. No pressure. Better not stuff it up, eh? Well, you can't really stuff it up because the, the flavour of the smoke still exists inside the thing. It's just the way we do it. Cool. Alrighty. I reckon we go get that jerky and load her in it. Okay, these are just trays that I use. Um, they didn't come with it, did they? No, I'm not sure where I got these from. Um... I'm just going to put a fine coat of oil on them and then I'm going to lay the jerky on it. The reason I don't put the jerky straight into the smoker is because they fall through the bars. So these will just keep them flat. Um, we've used these many a times. Um, good. Another neat trick is put the spicy one on the bottom because they will drip onto the others inside the smoker. So I'll just get the oil spray and spray it up. Uh, we just lay the jerky out, making sure that it's not curled or folded so that it gets a, a nice smoke on it all. Now we are going to, as it cooks, it shrinks a lot. So it doesn't matter, you put them right up against each other because by the time it comes out, they're going to be away from each other. Um, so I do pack it in a bit because there's only like four or five shelves in the smoker. so. You've really got to get it all in. Um, yeah. So this is what one of the finished trays looks like with that kind of spacing. And then on to the next one. top shelves because they're the ones without the chili and we'll shut the door get it warm up yep. it's probably worth also noting this is a real home working smoker so you know it's not showroom clean and stuff inside when you're looking at it because we actually use this thing and it gets used a fair bit um, and we've had a smoker like this for I think it's about 10 years now. It's actually the second one of these that we've had though. We did have a first one where it had like a glass door 
And that was actually not too bad for being able to see in a little bit, but I will say over time, the glass door kind of gets all the smoky residue sort of stuff on it. And even when you clean it, it does get really difficult to see in over time. So if you ever were looking at one kind of like this and if it's got glass versus not glass, I think we kind of learned that it doesn't really matter if it's got glass or not on it. Um, yeah, I think the, the first one we had for a lot of years, but I'm trying to remember what happened. I think it was the computer or something that ended up kind of malfunctioning on it and it, it kind of stopped working. But we love this thing so much that we did get another one. And I shouldn't say we. Hubby got the second one because the first one I actually got him for his birthday present. And uh, yeah, that would have been... Well, it's probably well over a decade now when I think about the birthday that that was actually for. So we've had one of these for a really long time and we've had this one now for... How long do you reckon we've had this one for? I reckon up to 15 years. You reckon we've had them about 15 years now? Yep. And this one here, do you reckon that's probably about, what, four or five years old now? Yeah, probably about five years old. Yep, cool. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't not have one of these again. Alrighty, so on to batch number two. And that's the chilli one, right? Yep. That. We don't mind a bit of chilli around here, do we? No. Don't like chilli. You're not living here. That's everything out of the spicy marinade. And this one here, we're not actually gonna waste because there's a fair bit of good marinade there. So I'm gonna use that today in a solar cook to do some beef ribs. Anyway, let's get these ones into the smoker too. Oh yeah, nice puff of smoke. What's that bottom tray thing made out of the mesh sheet? That, that's a barbecue thing that they offered. Um, we used to have four of them, but I can't find the other three. But that's for doing jerky for these. Did that actually come with it? No, we bought that somewhere um, at a barbecue show. So do you load it up fully? Yep. You just gonna have to jiggle it. Turn it up. Actually, we haven't mentioned what temperature and how long you're gonna do this for today. Um, we've set it to 72, and it's gonna go roughly eight hours, but we will check it towards the end there to make sure if we need it a bit more or a little bit less. And I've got the vents half open, so that's allowing smoke to go out, but it's also allowing the moisture to go out. We don't want to keep the moisture in. Some cooks, I close the vents to keep the moisture in. Um, others, I will really fully open. So today, I'm going to leave the vents open a fair bit to let the moisture escape. Cool. Alrighty, so we just leave this now, and uh, yeah, after how long should I be coming back and adding those chips in? In about 45 minutes or if you see that there's no smoke coming out because we just opened it we let all the smoke out but in about 10 minutes time you'll be seeing a lot of smoke coming out of here and about every 45 minutes a new round of chips just a small handful cool bananas alrighty leave it with me time to put some more chips in the smoker so I've been a bit slack it's actually been about an hour not 45 minutes like I was instructed and I can see there's not smoke coming out of here anymore, so I definitely need to get a few more in the bottom here. Let's see if I can pull that out. There we go. And now I need to put some chips in this little tray bit. So I can do this while juggling my phone in my hand and filming. Oh, I'm making a mess everywhere. Alrighty, I think that should be enough. And in she goes. Ooh. 
and turn. Job done. There's that smoke we're looking for. Now, I'm being a bad keeper of the smoker and I had to pop out to go and get some bits and bobs for a couple of other recipes that I'm doing today. And I've just got home and I can see it's not smoking anymore. So I do need to pop a little bit more chip in here. I might get sacked in my duty of fill-in jerky person. All right. As I said, this is normally hubby's thing. It's really just because I'm at uh, home today on my day off and he is off at work that I am tasked with this job. So hopefully I do still get a decent smoke on this jerky, given that did stop smoking again. Alrighty, hubby's now home and these have been in for probably about, would have been about eight hours, don't you reckon? Yeah, I reckon. Alrighty, so time to open it up and have a bit of a look. Oh, nice. They all look really good. What's the texture like? Well, that's perfect. It breaks, but it's not... It, like, it's still bendy. Yep. So it is actually, like, it's dry. It's not crisp at the moment, because the other thing to keep in mind is it's still hot. Um, he'd turned this off, but it hadn't, like, fully cooled down yet. And you do tend to find there's a bit more flex in the meat before it cools down. Um, once it's cool, it does get a little bit more crispy, doesn't it? Yeah, very much so. Alrighty, should we take them in? Yep. Excuse the noise going in the background because I've got the canner going, but uh, yeah, this one here is, these are the milds, aren't they? Yes. You can see the chunks of pepper that's on those. And yeah, we're just going to pack them up into separate Pyrex. And they can stay out of the fridge. Like quite often, if we want them to last a long time, you do actually pop them in the fridge, don't you? Yep. Or freeze them if you want to keep them for like winter. Yeah, but I don't think these ones are going to last that long. So they can stay out and they are shelf stable. And there's batch number two. This is batch number two. And as you can see, it's all, all the meat has shrunk in size obviously because it's dehydrated and you know there's a lot of flow between the meat so yeah it, this is the perfect way we like it with our family thought I'd bring it outside for the wrap up just so you can see the texture and the color of this a little bit better than we could see inside so that one there that's our spicy one that we did see the nice chili flakes on those have dehydrated as well as that's kind of smoked and that's got a really nice flavor to it that's the one that's got the pineapple in it that one's definitely my favorite this one here is hubby's favorite though so this is that more traditional one and you can see on here those bits of pepper on the jerky and uh, yeah that does have a nice peppery and probably more traditional sort of taste to a jerky so there we go guys, that is how hubby makes jerky. Did do it all under a little bit of duress today. <laughs> He's definitely not one that loves the camera, but um, yeah, I'm really glad that he was able to share the way that he does jerky with you guys, because I'm definitely a bit of an amateur when it comes to jerky making, but it is something he really enjoys doing. So thanks as always guys for joining and catch you later.